So the first phone that I had was just a standard kind of brick phone. Uh, it was nothing really special. It was my sister's old phone, so I inherited her old number and her old phone. Uh, nothing special. It had Snake on it, which was kind of cool. Uh, it was quite some time before I got another phone that had games. But other than that, it was just kind of basic. Just a brick with some buttons, and that was pretty much it. Now the second phone that I got, that was a huge upgrade. That was a flip phone, and they were all the rage at the time. What was amazing about this particular one, at least for me, was that it had a camera in it. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine a phone that doesn't have a camera these days? Yeah. This thing, I was so happy about it. I could only get like polyphonic music and ringtones on it. Uh, but it was still, it was a big improvement. And I had it for, you know, a decent while. It was like, I don't know, like maybe four years. I had it for a while. It had an antenna that I think did almost nothing. Then I got my first smartphone. This little LG phone. Oh. I loved this thing. Um, it was the first one that could not only take pictures and videos, but like, like had really much better quality than my flip phone. Uh, and you could get apps and stuff. Now it's just a dedicated Flappy Bird device. It doesn't have any memory. It can't do anything else. I don't think you can take pictures with it anymore because it doesn't have the memory for it. It can do Flappy Bird and that's it. I do miss having those buttons. Ugh, I wish they made phones with buttons these days. And I got my LG Optimus 2. This one I've now called Japanaphone because it's loaded up with different software for learning Japanese, like flashcards and stuff like that. Uh, it used to have a really cool case that was like kind of Iron Man inspired but now it's just got the Japanese flag on it and that's that. Fortunately it is a little bit dirty which shows that I haven't been studying Japanese lately. Then I've got my LG Stylo 2. This thing I was this is one I was very happy with the, uh, the overall size of the phone was like a huge improvement. The case that I made was like, I was real happy about it. I didn't know if the googly eyes were gonna work, but they turned out phenomenal. Getting him to like look different ways. Oh, I love it. Um, his mouth gets super dusty and it's a huge pain to clean it, but I'm really happy with how he looks. Um, yeah. That was awesome. Then I got my LG Stylo 4. This one I went with an octopus. Uh, I tried to do the googly eyes again. They, that's I think the fourth pair of googly eyes. Uh, they just, um, they break really easily. They get dried out and they get crushed. And yeah, it just didn't have the same um, construction as the previous one. Didn't have eyelids to like protect them, um, but it's still pretty good. When I got my new phone, which is a Motorola Moto G5, I needed to have a case. Based on the previous ones that I did, it had to happen. So the question was, what do I do? Well, Who Framed Roger Rabbit has always been one of my favorite movies. And I thought, yeah, why don't I go with that? So after doing some searching on the internet, I found an image that I really wanted to use as a reference for it. So I went, put that image into Inkscape, got it scaled to the size that I wanted based on the size of my phone. I then proceeded to move that file into GIMP, 
so that I could get an outline to send it off to the silhouette cutter. Typically when I watch YouTube, I hate watching people make stuff where they end up putting something into a laser cutter or a CNC machine because they feel like it's doing all the work for them and it's such a cost prohibitive machine that other people can't do it. So it's like, hey, watch me do something that you can't afford to do. The silhouette machine is not exactly like that. I think I spent $150 for it. So it's definitely a affordable piece of equipment if you're looking to do stuff. I highly recommend these things because they are great. Once I got the patterns cut out from the silhouette cutter, I then had to cut them completely out with an X-Acto knife. I then glued them together. To add to the 3D effect of the phone, I took some epoxy sculpt, mix it up, and then added it on for the eyebrows, the upper nose portion, and the hand to give it all a little bit more pop. Shortly after getting my new phone, it slipped really easily out of my hand, so I knew I had to do something about that. I gave that case a good sanding down to make sure that paint and glue could adhere to it well. I decided to glue a bunch of strips to the sides of the case just so that I had something to grip onto. Once all the strips were glued on, I then trimmed them down to size and then followed that up with sanding off any kind of edges that might stick out. In order to make the bricks for the backdrop, I needed to start with cutting down some styrene sheets. I used old for sale signs. I got them from a Kmart that was closing its stores. It was actually where I got my first job. They retail for about a dollar a piece. I think I got each one for like 13 cents. It's pretty sweet. So I cut up some strips, and I cut up way too many. I then took the strips and cut them down into individual brick sizes. I took my bricks, and then using a popsicle stick as a spacer, I glued them all on the phone in a pattern, starting from the bottom and working up to the top. Once all the bricks were in place, I gave it all a good sanding. I couldn't forget Roger's whiskers. I cut those out from some wire. I then glued the whiskers into the holes that I had pre-made when sculpting the nose. Once it was primed, I began the coloring process. Choosing which color to do, and then just focusing in on that step by step until all of the colors were put on. For more detailed work, like in the face, I made sure to pencil it in so that I knew I was going to have some sort of reference for when I painted and I wasn't just doing it freehand. I used a sharpie to go in and do some details on the eyes, and I used a special white sharpie to do some details on the nose. I gave it a nice top coat, and then it's all done, ready to go in my pocket. 